Hey, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the real me. <laughs> okay, much much better. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, good morning, uh, folks. Uh, this is Scott Wade with the uh, Holistic Connections. Today we're talking with James D. Cotton, uh, and we had connections years and years ago, uh, and now. After many, many years, we bumped into one another again on the internet, and uh, you're still into music. Yeah. You're still doing, when I first met you, that's what you was doing, and uh, that's what we like to do is talk uh, to folks who have a connection to a spirit somewhere, maybe that's driven by, uh, in your case, music. So tell us about it. James Dean, I don't know how long it's been, so... There's a lifetime of stories, and I, and some of them are in your songs. But where did where did your music connection start? Um, music, <clears throat> music was always a part of me. Um, I can remember being very drawn to music and mu playing musical instruments um, when I was a kid. Um, my mom had a boyfriend who was in a band uh, up in St. Louis and I remember going to their <clears throat> their practice set a few times and um, just being fascinated by the guitar. I didn't play anything but I remember going over to it and just kind of touching the strings a little bit and and um, hearing them resonate and uh, how, old, how old were you then? I must have been about 10 okay. yeah. and and I just, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it felt like something I i was really drawn to do. And then um, later on, she got like a little guitar, a little practice guitar, and I just pretty much took it. And uh, I got, I don't know if you remember, year, maybe they're still around, but years ago, you could get these guitar instruction books, take you through the lessons. And um, they were by Mel Bay. Mel Bay had this whole series, and I can remember learning where the notes were on the fretboard and the proper finger placement and the little black and white pictures, you know, saying that this is how you, <laughs> how you, you know, get an F note, and um, learning the scales. Um, I remember playing John Dooley for uh, Leora Krusen one day, uh, you know, because they were over and. Um, you know, and she just thought it was wonderful. And, <laughs> and well, you know, the the first the first group that I ever saw you play uh, with, I, you, I think you were the youngest kid in the group. And uh, what what was, was that? Deacon Blues. That was Deacon Blues. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's right. Um, I mean, you guys. Um, all right, so you fast forwarded quite a bit. Uh, maybe I was going too far back in time, but uh, oh, oh no, that, uh, that, that's but, not but no. I, I, was just, I was relating to the fact that I knew you'd been into music for quite some time because when you was Deacon Blues, uh, you 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 were already accomplished musician. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I did. Uh, well, let's do fast forward a little bit. I mean, I I did learn to play. Um, I played solo. Um, I. Um, joined Doug DeForest's band, Doug Driesel's band for years. And um and then I and I'm actually a little confused on the timing too, Scott. Um but when uh we formed Deacon Blues, um that was must have been I mean I think I just started college. Maybe it was the summer the first summer after college or first summer before. I have to ask Dave Benson oh, about that. So, so where were you? You were playing then uh, with another group before Deacon Blues. Mm hmm. Yeah, Doug Driesel. <clears throat> Doug Driesel. Okay. So Doug, All right. Doug, well, maybe, uh -huh. Doug had several bands, and um, and we played together. I played guitar for him and and sang backup. Yeah. And um, yeah, and and that was uh, pretty much uh, through through high school thing. And, um, and then they moved to Texas and I went down one summer with them, mm -hmm. I think the summer before my junior year. 
So that would have been around 77 or 78 to date myself. And um, we uh, uh, played some gigs down there, got in some trouble, got the sawmill started for Billy Joe. And um, and then I, I decided I really couldn't. And it was just too... Bus- music business is just a little unstable for me, um, just with how I grew up and how I wanted to live my life. And um, so I just couldn't commit as much as I wanted to. And it kind of broke my heart to not continue with it, but I was just pulled other directions. And, you know, but I never it never got out of me. Yeah. And of course, I got right back into a band <laughs> as soon as I got back to Missouri. Right. And, um, you know, so we started up... Uh, Deacon Blues and, uh, you know, with, with Henry and uh, Dave Benson and Roy Taylor and uh, Terry Carr. And um, and that's when uh, we met you and your brother. And you guys, you basically managed us for a while. But I can remember we did, I don't know if it was an audition or you were just over. I forgot what the deal was. But uh, we were playing uh, Blue Morning, Blue Day um, by... Uh, Let's see, who was that? Foreigner. Remember Foreigner? Yeah. The group Foreigner. And uh I know, and this is this is in my memory um so well. So we were playing and I was playing, you know, C sharp minor and, and Roy was on bass. And um and Hank was singing the the lead and then when the chorus came and the three of us, I think myself and Benson and Hank all joined in together and that, you know, blue morning, blue day, three part harmony just like burst out. I remember you and your brother looked at each other and you guys just you just smiled. <laughs> and it made me so happy. I was like, you know, and I could just see the look in your eyes. Oh, you know, there, there's there's something here. Yeah. Something special. Yeah. 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 Do you remember that? Oh yeah, I do. Uh uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. And you, you guys got us some good gigs, val- val- you know, some validating jobs, to, places to play, and, uh, you know, in the area there. And I uh, had a wonderful time. That was, that was a really good group. Yeah. Too bad we don't have some recordings, you know. No, there's, that was... You know, yeah, Hank asked, Hank asked, and I looked. I had, an old, I had the old uh, uh, cassette, I guess, at one time. Uh, mm-hmm. that I that I went out and 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 showed the folks, you know, and mm-hmm. and showed them what you could do, and uh, I, I, you know, it disappeared They're somewhere. Gone. Yeah, yeah, maybe they'll <laughs> turn up sometime. <laughs> I I do have a box of them. I haven't went through in a long time, so maybe so. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, uh, as you bounced around, you lost, you kind of lost the idea of connecting with groups and just continued to go ahead and, uh, and keep with your music because of just that feel that, that, uh, it's something that is part of me. Is, is that where, is that where you're at? It's, in, you? it's in, it's in me. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I just could never stop playing. I couldn't even stop writing songs. I think I wrote my first song, you know, I was 15 years old and, uh, you know, it was about unrequited love and I just, uh, never, I never really stopped, you know? I mean, I, I, uh, I can remember in high school, um, you know, with all the emotional ups and downs that go with growing up, um, just sitting in in my bedroom, you know, playing a D major seventh chord and just like hugging my guitar, you know, and my ear like on the body of it, you know, just feeling the resonance of, of that chord and other chords. And it, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, it, it just was super important to me and it, and it, it, I don't know. It just feel like I, I felt it, you know, at a visceral level. And, um, you know, when I play, it's not like I'm just playing a song and I, you know, I want to make people happy. Um, there's kind of a selfish component too. When I play, I play mostly by myself here, you know, where nobody right. hears me. Right. And I get a lot out of it. And so when I'm playing for other people, I'm, I'm really happy if, if it makes them feel good, feel feel like they're not alone, 
You know, they feel connected in some way, and I love sharing that. But ultimately, I would do it anyway if nobody was listening, um, because it's just something, I don't know. I think I just get a lot out of it. Well, there's something about the, the vibration that, you know, there's there's some folks that, that are that are into certain ohms and things of this nature that uh, as they mm -hmm. go into their meditative state and uh, and I believe that those I mean with, with music you're hitting all sorts of different ranges of, of vibration that the body is a, uh, somehow is in touch with I think so I mean you know middle C is at 440 hertz right so that's 440 vibrations a second uh -huh. and your ear can detect that and all the overtones your body your body can feel it but it's the lower the lower frequencies that really your body functions at right it's down in the a few hertz you know kind of kind of range really low i think if you look at the resonant spectrum that an um, instrument like a guitar kicks out or even a human voice there's you know there's components that are I don't know. I've always speculated this. This is maybe the forum to talk about it. I mean, I, I think, you know, you look at the, the way your brain operates, for example. There's alpha waves, delta waves. Your nervous system operates at a certain frequency. I mean, these are all documented medical facts. Mm -hmm. right. And if you, it kind of stands to reason. I mean, if you, I was talking with Benson the other day, actually, about this. If you, if you, if you play a note and then you bring another instrument up that is tuned to somewhere close to that note, you know, the air vibrations of that frequency will activate and resonate in the other instrument, and it'll start to vibrate too. That's just right. called resonance, right? You can get resonance. Everything resonates all the time. Right. Cars going down the freeway here off I-90, you know, like there's a lot of white noise, but I can hear the resonance from, you know, the bodies of the uh, the you know the the panels on the trucks you know the tires the frames all that is you know you can hear notes sometimes as they go by right. and I I kind of I just wonder sometimes if the frequencies that your body functions at can also be activated by resonant means you know I'm getting that and you know maybe there's something to it yeah I, I wrote a song at one time called rock and roll music will kill you you know, it was back during the time that, uh, that, that there was a, a lot of talk about the, the high, I guess, probably just the, just the megahertz of the whole thing, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. what, uh, just being hit by some of those big speakers. But anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. It can be the, damaging. So, so if, if that's the case, then there's a full range. It can do love, too, on the other end. And I think that that's what you're, I think that that's what kept you around music is you can just feel the love that comes off of it. And, and people can feel that love when they listen to your songs, you know, and, and that's cool. You know, that that's just really cool to be able to project yeah. uh, just with sound waves and of course with words also. Well, they, they go together, right? I mean, a really good song has a uh, component of what, what they call prosody, right? Where you get consistency between, you know, the instrumentation, the melody, the lyrics, like the general feel and tempo of the song, like if all that works together in a consistent way, it's very powerful, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you got... Um, it, it makes you smile. Yeah, yeah. When it all works together. Yeah, and I, I mean it, and I, it does so many things. I mean, music it connects. Like if you've ever remember the old commercials where they say, you know, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs. Right? <laughs> yeah, and they got the eggs frying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, exactly. Exactly. And then there was a a book written. Uh, I'll think of the guy's name in a minute, but it was called "This Is Your Brain on Music." Right. And um, and there's great studies you can look them up on the internet. Looking at was what... it an omelet? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like if they do MRI studies on your brain when you're listening to music, uh -huh. and it act it lights up like a Christmas tree, like all these regions, you know, like it's it's 
you know, the, the parts that recognize rhythm and the parts that, you know, recognize tempo, different relative notes, and of course mm -hmm. the lyrics, um, like the same as reading, but also parts of memory. Like mu music dials in, like, like so many songs you can think of, you think of a song the first time you heard a song and where were you? You can remember, like, where were you the first time you heard a song? Yeah. yeah. Right? That yeah. was on an eight track in my 64 Chevy, right? I mean, you, yeah. you know, yeah. you remember and probably you have songs like that in your own mind. Okay. So music is, is super powerful. I, I think it's built into our, our, our genetic code, you know, the way our brain operates. Um, it helps you remember things and it ties in in certain ways. It's, it's important in our culture, you know, the way we think and feel. And um, that's why I think when you play a song and you just get pulled in, um, that makes you feel not so alone, you know, like it, it, it's helping, it connects, it connects people, you know. And, well, when you're talking about lighting up the brain, you're talking about energy flowing through the brain and uh mm -hmm. and if we're, if, right. we're in, if we're in certain parts of our brain we're communicating with different uh i guess different dimensions and mm -hmm. uh, and yeah I, the the more we're able to move it from back here up to here the better accor according to uh you know the the monks of the himalayas <laughs> yeah so that's yeah. interesting as you move that energy around bringing it up to a more loving spot that's, that's yeah cool. yeah yeah that's right some of these guitars are really different right i mean well obviously the ukulele and the mandolin produce very different sounds and i played them for different purposes right um the two electrics you know so i got a strat there which is really really for playing you know lead lead guitar that's mainly what i use it for um you know, there's the Gibson SG, which is, it's got a lot more power to it. And so, you know, so for like blues and rock type things, um, you know, where I don't want all the resonance of an acoustic guitar, I'll go there. And then on the acoustic side, I got these four acoustics. Um, the Washburn I've had since the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. Um and I kill, go, it's not an expensive guitar. It's an intermediate guitar. I bought it used, but I still go back to it. It's got a certain sound and a playability that I actually don't have with much more expensive guitars. And then the Martin D28, I got, because at one time I thought it, I, I thought I wanted to upgrade. You know, I thought I need a better, I just need a better guitar. It, it's got a little better sound and uh, I think the tone is better but uh there's still there's certain things it doesn't have that my old washburn does um i got the taylor actually i got the taylor before i got the martin because the taylor has uh electronics built in so i can you know when i started playing live i wanted to be able to plug into a di so i can go through the pa system and it's mm -hmm. got the cutaway if you know when i was playing a little bit of lead on the acoustic uh, i could get higher up on it so um taylor's a great guitar and then i got the that classical guitar in the middle um that's a that's called an etude etude by uh, la patria guitars out of canada um that's made out of um old growth redwood that uh, has fallen um they take down trees uh from the old growth forest and they'll they'll get rounds out of there and um and then they manufacture guitars it's got very very straight grain so it it projects in an amazing way i mean it's just got such a wonderful tone it's, and it's for classical type songs so i have a few songs where i'm playing in a classical style and that works best so and then i got a bass guitar on occasion i think i can play bass so i try and which, uh which one loves you the most which one loves me the most right. the washburn the washburn yeah. <laughs> we've we've been together a long time <laughs> <Yeah>. well, <laughs> well, how, how about playing a song for us today yeah yeah absolutely that that, uh, that, would, that would be great yeah
Is it coming through? Can you hear me? Um, actually, I've been working on a new one. I haven't played it anywhere. Um, maybe I could debut it here for you. Would that be all right? Well, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm, a, I'm involved in a, a group here um, called Songwriters in Seattle, Scott. Uh -huh. And um, there's a guy that organizes a songwriting challenge. And uh, this is every month or two. He'll give you a topic. Some of these topics are darn near impossible, I think. There's no way I can write a song around that topic. Right. Um, you know, others, uh, I mean, sometimes the, ch the challenge is just good. You're like, you know, how do you take this word? Someone gives you a word and you got to build a story around it in your own way. Mm -hmm. So... Anyway, the, the topic this month is heroes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, this one's called Heroes. Lately I've been drifting without a compass or a sail Straight into the center of a storm There's something in the water and it's just beyond the veil Feeding on a fear that's without form It's without form I've been searching in the heartland, in the cities and the malls, in all the places that I used to go. And all I see is weariness and shadows on the wall, and in the eyes of everyone I know, everyone I know. Well, Jefferson and Lincoln have really got me thinking, Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King, John Lennon and Da Vinci. And no need to convince me We could use a hero once again Like a seabird on the ocean or a lighthouse on the shore Shining out to all the none of us And every generation And all we're living for And they become the best in all of us The best in all of us Well, Jefferson and Lincoln They really got me thinking I had my Gandhi and Martin Luther King Lennon and Da Vinci had no need to convince me We could use a hero once again Well, Thomas Paine and Lincoln It really got me thinking Newton, Einstein, Martin Luther King Dylan and Da Vinci Dr. Madame Curie We could use a hero once again We could use a hero once again Calling all good women and the best of all men living We could use a hero once again Wow, thank you, you're welcome That, uh, that really hits it for now for this this day and time doesn't it i guess it does in any time and, yeah i mean i've certainly been um saddened and struggled with all the troubles we've had getting along um the divisions and the conflict i mean it's hard i don't know about anyone else it's hard on me 
Um, mm. I feel that I can't even talk about it hardly, but I, I, in this song, I tried to capture, you know, the people throughout history that I've admire and looked up to and people that stepped up to try to make a difference and, uh, honor them. And, uh, I think just asking everyone to be, be your best and, um, golden rule, right? <laughs> treat other people like you would yourself and uh, yeah. like you want them to treat you. Now, ultimately, the hero is within us. All we have to do is let it out. That's right. That's exactly, yeah. It, that's what I tried to put in this song without saying it directly. And I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you said that. Yeah, well, I, I saw it in the song. And, and the way, you know, that that's always what amazed me about musicians is to take the words, but but then yeah, there's there's all of this other stuff that goes with it, and I think you alluded to that earlier when you talked about the way that song feels together. Very very nice. I like that. It it makes yeah. me smile. <laughs> oh, cool. I, I'm so smile. glad. I'm glad you. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. You're the first person to hear it. Yeah, that well, one's actually in. It's uh the guitar's in a Celtic, uh, Celtic tuning. So. I don't know how I got on that, but I've been playing in this tuning for a year now, for the most part. And uh -huh. uh, it's got, I can hear, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear other parts in there. You know, I can hear bagpipes, for example, you know, that droning right. sound. And, yeah, uh, yeah. There, there was something interesting about it, and, and until you yeah. actually identified yeah. what the difference was. Uh -huh. And I can hear a mountain dulcimer, and I can hear, you know, some. Uh, bluegrass violin swooping in mm -hmm. on those drone notes and uh -huh. uh, um, i've been trying to produce it i'm not happy yet with the way the parts i've been laying down are going with drums and other things i this is a song that i think maybe needs to be played live you know maybe this is the right form i i don't know that i think i can make a nice recording adding bass and you know all these other parts but uh -huh. it's like every time i add something I'm trying to dress it up and it may be prettier, but you're kind of hiding, not hiding, but diluting maybe the intent of the song. And that song may be best played just a voice and a guitar, you know, just bare, naked. Well, James Dean, I thank you for the day. And I, and I thank you for uh, thank you. the time that we spent earlier in, in our lives. And it's so nice once again, to be able to connect, even though it is uh, through thousands of miles. And Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. It was an honor to, to be here on your show. Um, I really appreciate the time and it's just a pleasure talking with you again, Scott. Oh, great. Uh, as you go, go blessed and be groovy, man. <laughs> <laughs> 